How are we doing, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of FSI's NHL DFS Pick Show. I am your host, TK Nation 47, breaking down tonight's 10 game NHL slate. Uh, I'm usually with a partner in crime, McKinley 412, but we did not get the chance to get together for a video last night. So, what I am flying solo this morning before I head off into work. Uh, we have a, like I mentioned, nice 10 game slate here. A couple of teams on a back to back. Colorado uh, coming off of a, a loss, eight to three versus Toronto. And Ottawa coming off of a loss, six to two versus Vancouver. Uh, both uh, one in a really good matchup, Colorado which I'll talk about later, and Ottawa in a pretty tough matchup in Carolina. Carolina coming off of a long road trip, West Coast road trip, so they are happy to be home. Um, although their defenders are in shambles with the health and safety protocols, uh, but their forwards, their center are not. So we could still see quite a bit of a lopsided victory. Carolina, a minus 300 favorites. favorite. Vegas seems to think. They will have no problem with Ottawa. Florida also a two minus 290 favorite versus Buffalo. Um, we also have Washington minus 200 favorite versus Chicago. And the Dallas Stars minus 170 versus Columbus. And Minnesota minus 175 versus New Jersey. So that's kind of what we have going on with our favorites on the slate. Uh, you have a six and a half point total Colorado and Montreal, six total Florida versus Buffalo, six total Carolina versus Ottawa, six total Minnesota versus New Jersey and six total Washington versus Chicago. So quite a bit of high scoring to be expected in tonight's slate. I'm going to break down a couple of picks by position, starting off with the center position. I really like Nathan McKinnon here on the back to back as well. You saw Nick McKinnon get 21, uh, 21 minutes on the ice. You can expect that to be around the same. He had two assists, five shots on goal on his return. Colorado did not play as bad. It was just a gauntlet of Toronto last night. They just seemed to have bring their brought their A game. I still think Colorado in a great spot versus Montreal, a much softer opponent, a team that looks to be in a rebuild, uh, as that name has been floated around their organization after making it all the way to the Stanley Cup finals. Their team kind of benefited from the weak can Canadian division. And now we'll see what they can do when <laughs> they're up against the entire NHL. It's kind of right back to normal for Montreal. Maybe they can get it going later in the year, but right now you want to attack Montreal and we're attacking them with some of the best players on the, on the slates, McKinnon, Landis Cog, and Rantanen. So I like that little line stack there up top. Uh, I don't mind some players like Ryan Hartman here from Minnesota skating with Kaprizov. Um, you can maybe play Bennett as well, but both players typically around sub 5K, a little above their head in weight, in weight and salary. So it scares me a little bit to know that there could be a floor game coming, but I still think those two guys playing really well this year in the NHL and they could still play up to that level of that salary, especially with the, the, the wingers that they're skating with and the matchup that they have in place. Uh, but my favorite play on the slate from the center position is group a hints. Where did he go? He just, I just lost him. Five fifty-seven hundred 5,700 sub six K still coming off of a hat trick. But before that, he's got a goal and assist two goal and an assist versus Edmonton, two goals versus St. Louis. Uh, nine points in his last 10 games, scoring in an elite clip fantasy-wise. Uh, Rupe Hintz uh, skating with the top line. Dallas finally healthy and clicking. Uh, they're coming off of a big victory versus Carolina. I really love them against the Blue Jackets, who have failed to stop anyone uh, lately against you know Carol, uh, Columbus. Gave up six goals over the weekend to St. Louis. Six to Nashville last time out. Coach already admitted that their team in a little bit of a rut need to get through uh, this, this damp moment uh, for Columbus. I don't know if they're going to do that versus a team like Dallas. Dallas has been really good lately and uh, hints could Jeff definitely be um, one of the top scorers on the slate. If he has another one of those hat trick type games, right? All right. Punt um, for the center position. I kind of like, um, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be either or for me. And I haven't decided because I don't know where to go on what side, but I'm going to go with Dylan cousins 
or or this or Lundell. I'm I'm not I'm I'm so torn on this Buffalo Florida game. I know Florida is a really really big favorite, but the Sabers played pretty teams pretty tough. Uh, Florida still uh, dealing with the loss of Alexander Barkov. They give up some goals from the center position, and Dylan Cousin coming off of back to back games with goals and losses versus Detroit and Seattle. Um, Yes, I think Florida can still win this game. Yes, I think, you know, Huberto, Bennett um, make for really good plays. We'll talk about another name later. But I think Cousins gets his, I guess you would say. A um, couple of shots on goal. He can block shots, you know, any kind of points. And you're really looking up at 3,700. I don't mind that. Dylan Cousins, I think, can get his even in a loss. Um so I, I really like that as my punt. I don't mind Lars Eeler either against Chicago. You want to kind of get exposure to Washington without having to pay an arm and a leg for Ovechkin. Eller coming off of injury scored last time out um, versus the Florida Panthers. See, another center position, kind of in that same. That's why that's where I got the idea with Cousins looking at someone like Lars Eeler. Same type of role in that second bottom, bottom tier center. Um, that could really come away with a victory as far as points wise for us in fantasy. Uh, so I don't like them. I don't mind them to kind of stuck on them both on which one to pick for the core later today. Winger position. Obviously we talked about Colorado. So I like ranting in. You could always take Ovechkin on a slate. doesn't matter, but 9,700, you're really going to need a couple of goals to go along with that shot bonus to get that to get that salary to really pay off for you when, with the rest with what you have to do to the rest of your lineup. If I play Ovechkin, I, I'm probably going to pay for him by himself. It's hard to really fit Kuznetsov with him, uh, with Kuznetsov not really being a high f- fantasy points uh, player, fantasy points floor player. That's one. That's a tough one to say. Uh, not really sure what to do with Boston and Nashville. It's, I think it's going to be a, like a really tough game. There's a lot other games on the slate that I think can really produce a little bit more goals. Caprizi off, as I mentioned with Hartman, you can go that route. Huberto, always a threat here for Florida. I think he makes for the best play on, for from them on that side. Uh, three assists in his last time out. He can score goals, uh, as we can see here, seven goals in 22 games, uh, no matter who his center is. All right, going to drop down a little bit, talk about my second favorite win winger uh in this mid-range here i'm going to go with manju pani uh 15 goals in 22 games that's really his role score goals and he has it in his last three but you know chicago he kind of laid an egg team didn't really need him that night you know winnipeg was a really tough matchup but he scored six shots on goal and then you get the uh home game versus pittsburgh that they lost in overtime that was just a really tough matchup again you know, you, you can expect a floor game every now and then, but, you know, hey, scored against Boston, two goals versus the Islanders, two goals versus Buffalo, got shut out versus Philly, but then he scored against Ottawa. So he has uh, the ability to score goals, and we're going to get L.A. tonight. I know Dowdy's back, and L.A.'s kind of been a tough team. They're on the road, but this is a traditional West Coast matchup. I think Calgary is going to have – you know, a good game tonight. And I like Mangiopani to be a part of it. I think he gets on the score sheet at 5,100 or what is he? 5,200. I think that's a fair price for a guy where I'm not really sure what's going on in this price range. You know, you could definitely take Tara Vine and you could take Wilson if you want to pair him with Ovechkin. Uh, but I'm not really in love with Batherson or Killyorn in tough matchups. You can obviously, I really love Jason Robertson. I just didn't want to mention too many Dallas stars because I'm really going up against this, this Blue Jackets matchup here. I, I just watched the game last time out versus Nashville. It was an absolute bloodbath. Robertson probably won. Manjupani probably two in this price range. Uh, to fully no, not against Colorado. I have follow. That's a tough matchup for a guy that can go, you know, zero. <laughs> so Carew maybe versus Tampa Bay a plot. No, I, don't, I just want to stay away from the St. Louis Tampa Bay matchup. So you can see why I really like Manju Pani Robertson. Those are my two favorite winger plays on the slate. Uh, punts. I, it's it's they're all kind of the same in my in my opinion. Neck is going to be on that top line. You could take him. Seth Jarvis, nice young prospect. 
Uh, Verhage, I think, is a, is a solid play here. You could play him with uh, Sammy Reinhardt. Um, I don't mind that. Uh, Nishushkin versus Montreal. I love taking him with Kadri. Um, I love that matchup for him. I'm going to go with Patrick Hornquist is the guy I taught, though. Uh, three goals to, in his 22 games. He's really found his way. I know he's on the fourth line, but this is a guy that can skate with the top power play unit. He's gotten there in the last few games, 14 points versus Seattle, 11 versus Washington. He had an assist. He gets some shots on goal. He's got plenty of ice time here. It's, you know, not bad for a fourth line winger. Um, they're really looking for offense now with Barkov out. So I think Manju Pani, or excuse me, Patrick Hornquist makes for a really great play, especially down here in the 3,500 price range. Uh, next up, we're going defender. Um, up top here, let's talk a little bit about Makar. Had a disappointing game, but this is a really good bounce back. I think his point totals are going to start going down. Now that we have McKinnon back, I think the focus is back up top to him. I think he's really going to see a price decrease over the next couple of games because now that McKinnon is back leading the, the power play, leading you know the offense and the attack, I think that lesser that lowers Makar's role within the offense, and I think he, it might suffer for him. I still think he can get there on points every now and then, but 8K, you're not really getting that big high upside that you want. So I'm going to be out on Makar uh, until I can see he can produce with McKinnon on the ice. Uh, Dougie Hamilton always. I mean, you can always play Dougie Hamilton in, in a small vacuum here, 14 points in his last time out without getting any points. Shots on goal monster. Block shots. Yeah, Dougie always, always in play. Never, never, ne never think you can – never think you don't have to play Dougie Hamilton if you have the salary, right? Um other than that, uh, there's really not much else I like up top for the defender position, so I, I like this mid-tier. Miro Hiskinen, uh, Klingberg is news we're going to have to watch. He is day-to-day. -day. Uh, he might use questionable play tonight. But Hiskinen, um, <laughs> Columbus gives up goals to defensemen. They score goals with defensemen, and they give up goals with defensemen. It's a true back-and-forth matchup, and I think Hiskinen's going to be in favor of a big game. Love that he's under 6K, so I'm going to have him quite a bit tonight in, in all of the lineups that I produce. Uh, so I really like him. Uh, also, if we want to keep scrolling down here, uh, Slavin uh, for Carolina, going to probably be, I don't think he's on the power play, but he's going to have quite a bit of ice time. We saw 22 minutes with all those defenders out. He is going to be on the floor for most of the, most of the time skating with his pair was skating with his line mate, uh, assist in his last game, three shots on goal. You know, he's got three block shots in other games. You know, he's got at least two to three shots on goal. That's what we can expect. We got a good floor here. 4,400 is not a bad price tag for a, for a solid floor. I think he's a really good opportunity for a core play tonight. I like Orlov. Um, this guy's always a threat to score from deep. Four points or four goals on 22, 23 games, 10 assists. You can see he's been kind of going nuts lately. Two assists last time out versus Florida. Goal and assist versus Carolina. Uh, you know, he did the same versus Montreal. I really like this matchup for Dmitry Orlov uh, at 3,900. Not bad at all. Lastly, I'll talk about Eric Johnson, 3,400 versus, versus Montreal. Montreal can give up goals from anywhere out on the, on the ice. Uh, Eric is, you know, he had that floor game versus Toronto, but, you know, playing on his back foot most of the game, didn't get any opportunity to get any of those shots on goal. But when he does, he can produce assists, he can produce points, uh, you know, and he had that goal versus Seattle. I think he scores a goal tonight uh, as a third line defenseman. You're not really asking for much other than a couple of shots on goal, maybe a block shot. And then if you get that extra point, that extra point, goal or assist, uh, you're in business, right? So I don't mind that. Favorite line on the slate, uh, I don't mind Colorado, as mentioned. Uh, but if I'm going to have to feel good about anything, I feel really good about Dallas one. Uh, give me hints. Give me Robertson and Pavelski. Really solid price tags, too, on those. Under 6K for hints, under 5K for both Robertson and Pavelski. I think they have a massive game tonight. 
Dallas versus my own Blue Jackets. You got to know, you got to know when you see it. And and the Blue Jackets are about to get smacked tonight versus the Dallas Stars. All right, that'll wrap things up. Thank you, everyone, for listening in. Please like this video. Comment below with any questions that you may have. You can follow me on Twitter at TKNation47. You can follow us on Twitter at FSI underscore DFS. And you can follow us on our website, FSIDFS.com. All right, guys, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy your day today. And, uh, yeah, enjoy tonight's slate. Good luck.